welcome to my latest video. I'm going to be painting on this nice burnt sienna underpainting that I did earlier. It's got at least two paintings underneath it that I've covered over. I'm going to be using these long handled brushes. They've got quite coarse bristles, which uh, might make some nice textures in the sky. Just uh, to see what happens. Just painting skies every day, you soon realise that the more brushes you use, the better. So it creates a variety of different textures and a bit more depth. Because, you know, if you look at a real sky, there's no two clouds are the same. It's all different hues and textures and stuff going on. So I'm using several brushes. Instead of just one, I used to just paint with one. But, uh, yeah, I've just... Um, Make my horizon about a third of the page, or a canvas, I should say. Canvas being about 20 by 16 inches. You start swirling the scan up a bit. Yeah, it'll soon be Remembrance Day, a couple of days' time. Of course, there's uh, all sorts of events going on at the weekend, marking Remembrance Day, very important day. And I'll give this long handle push a try, with a nice coarse bristles, might put some anger up here. It's a start anyway. Trouble with the coarse bristle, it's just uh, left a great big uh, bristle on the paint and I just had to flick off. Got a smaller one as well. Hopefully, it won't shed any bristles. Love long handled brushes. They really do help your movement. Helps you be to aim it more expressive. Now, I don't know if anybody's watched um, that film by Peter Jackson. Um, the name will come to me in a minute. Come on, John, what's the name? But they shall grow not old. That was it. And um, it, it featured that amazing um, colour footage or recolorised footage from uh, World War One. And I'm not going to give too much away, but um, it, the film starts... As a, you know, your traditional documentary, you know, with a narrator. And it kind of lulls you into a full sense of security. You know, as the narrator talking away in black and white footage, and it, it talks about the history of World War I, how it all started, and goes into great depth. And then it kind of builds to a crescendo you know, halfway through the film. And then, bang, it hits you with colour. And your hair, just, well, my hair, just went bang, just all stood on end. You know, sort of tickled down my spine. It was incredible. Absolutely stunning, but I'm not going to go into... Too much detail, but yeah, definitely watch it if you haven't seen it. It's a very important film. I'll be watching it again. It's 
definitely worth the watch. But yeah, it, um, the, the film kind of takes hold of you and drags you, kicking and screaming into the trenches, and it it's, feels like you're there. I'd, I'd love to have seen it in the cinema. But yeah, it, um, yeah, it, it puts you in the trenches, and, it, you know, the, the coloured footage makes you realise that, you know, they're just like us, you know, just ordinary lads. And, um, you know, it was like it was filmed yesterday. It's an exceptional piece of film. Yeah, I do like watching documentaries. I, I enjoy films and things like that where you can take something away from it. You know, you learn something through watching. Yeah, I do like documentaries. There's a brilliant, well, there's a loads of brilliant documentaries on um, Netflix. And there's one, it's literally called The Song. That's a good one. Really good. And that uses, um, you know, it's, it's documentary, it's, it's dramatised, so it's, it uses actors, some actors quite well known in it. And it follows the one of the pals of the times getting just ordinary men. You know, on the first day of the psalm and the, the run up to it. Yeah, it's, you know, this time of year it does remind you how lucky we are to live in this day and age. Where, you know, men and boys aren't being sent off to a meat grinder somewhere, you know. Yeah, it's coming on nicely, ish. Well, eight minutes in, we have the painting. It's not great; it's a bit of a mess, but um, still really does. I used to uh, participate in World War II reenactments, and uh, that, that kind of brings home to you, you know, the the seriousness of what we we're doing. I mean, yeah, we we're just going away drinking for a weekend, but. It does make you realise. Gives you a kind of flavour. I mean, we'll never know how bad it was, but it does give you a bit of a flavour. Particularly the, the battle reenactments we did. The 
pyrotechnics were done by a team of people who worked on fury and things like that. And, uh, yeah, the, the noise and the, you, you'd have your wind, the wind knocked out of you. And that, they were just relatively safe explosions, but what it must have been like to, to have real ordnance landing on top of you must have been absolutely horrifying. I've got um, a letter here at home. It was uh, written in the trenches, World War I, about 1915. And it's in very shaky writing. You know, you can hardly read it. And that, that was written uh, the day before the song. Somewhere in the trenches. And there's a you know, very shaky writing, you can't read it. And then you turn over the letter and it says in, in much neater writing, sorry about my writing, we were being shelled at the time. Uh, it's incredible. You know? <laughs> but yeah, if, if you want a, a testament to the sheer power of a barrage, you know, just reading that letter and then seeing uh, on the back, I'm sorry about my writing, I've been shelled, you know, very matter of fact. You know? <laughs> Incredible. It's uh, hard to imagine these days how horrific, how frightening it must have been. It's coming on nicely. Yeah, it's one of my prized possessions. That letter is genuine, genuine letter. I think it was written by somebody in the uh, chats with rifles. Part of the Sherwood Foresters Regiment, I think so. Who, uh, who lived in Buxton, in the Peak District, in Derbyshire. Yeah, my um, granddad on my dad's side, he was a conscientious objector because he was a, a Quaker. We're not allowed to bear arms. But, um, you know, it's, it's often said it takes more courage to object. But um, he, he very much did his bit. He was a... Uh, he was a doctor during the Blitz in London, which he never spoke about, never ever spoke about that. And um, he, he decided to join the Friends Ambulance Corps, which was uh, yeah, an ambulance corps with Quakers, it was made up of Quakers. So they acted as medics and stretcher bearers and ambulance drivers and everything else. You know, on the front line, but with no way to defend themselves, mind you, you know. It's still uh, in the firing line. 
Oh, another whistle. So that's that off. And he ended up going to North Africa. Join uh, Al Alamein and and you know Tabuk and places on like that. He only ever spoke about the the light-hearted, humorous side of it all. He never spoke about the bad stuff. Not once. Hey, he once uh, saw Field Marshal Rommel, you know, the commander of the German Africa Corps. As uh, quite often they do, um, you know, they'd have a brief ceasefire and they'd swap medical supplies with each other, you know, the Germans and the British. And, you know, the, the borrow stuff, you know, stretchers and ambulances and all kinds of things, you know. And, um, yeah, he, he saw Rommel. He was stood there, covered in dust. And, uh, tatty clothes, you know. Yeah. He, he said he, Rommel had a kind of aura about him, because everyone knew about him. Everyone knew about Rommel. The desert fox. Yeah, he was uh, a soldier's soldier. Really, he he wasn't into the Nazi party and all that sort of thing. He was just a soldier. Yeah, pilot lifetime. Do like using pallet ramps as well. The fun begins. Could easily be um, Stanner Judge or Berber Judge in the Peak District. This is where my shaky hands start coming to the fore. It's a little more obvious. Add to it with shaky hands. Really ought to have a tablet. Yeah, I have tablets to, uh, which help, I haven't got the tablets for essential channel wonders. But I haven't got enough to have all the time. And they tend to use them when I really, really need them. Because they are PRM. It says on the box, take one three times a day, but I've got nowhere near enough each month. I can only manage one a day if I'm working because I soon run out. Yeah, that definitely looks like Stanage or somewhere like that. Just created for my mind's eye and listen to music. Or walks and things down here on the foreground. 
So I slow the coke. <clears throat> yeah, I've got two weeks off on uh, starting third. I can't really wait. Yeah, the lots of painting. A few highlights going on. few things in the distance as well. Some implied detail. Walls and trees and gardens as well. By the way, thank you for all of your likes and comments and things. Don't forget to subscribe. It really does mean a lot. Yeah, a few finishing touches. As I've said before, I always think I've finished and I'll see something. Yeah, this, this foreground isn't bad. Oh, a little bit of a wall going on there. Yeah, I used to love... Uh, Walking around Stanage and places like that, doing photography. I think, um, yes, yeah, Stanage was my very first ever call out the mountain rescue. Yeah, we had uh, a chat with Country Fair, and uh, I was still a trainee, so I wasn't even on the call out list. And uh, everyone's pages went off, and we were stood next to one of the vehicles, and and I thought, yeah, there's no way I'll be going. I'm just a trainee, I've only been in a couple of months or something like that. And uh, yeah, they uh, they beckoned me into the waiting ambulance, and off I went. We blue lighted it over to uh, Stanage. Yeah, my first ever call. You never forget your first time. Yeah, I quite like the texture from this uh, coarse brush. It is really nice and actually. I think I'll be using this again. Yeah, whenever we went on a job with blue lights, I don't know if it was 
just me or if everyone else experiences. But yeah, if you, you go on a job with the blue lights and the sirens going for quite a while after the event, you can still hear the sirens in your ears. Yeah, I do miss Mountain Rescue Desperate. Yeah, when I first moved to North Wales, people said, oh, why don't you do it in Wales? Oh, there's no bloody chance. It's a Derbyshire had the local knowledge. And, uh, you know, around Snowdon, it's a different bloody kettle of fish. I'm nowhere near as fit as I used to be. And plus, to be in Clamber's team and all the rest of it, I think it helps to be uh, a true mountaineer, you know, which I'm not. Yeah, I think that was just about dandy. Very nearly there. Again, I've seen something. Nearly there, though. Finishing touches. Yeah, you know, I think the job is a good one. Might put a little bit more of something up here. There we are. Perhaps a little person or people up there. Yeah, that is just about dandy. I think the job is a good one. So thank you so much for watching. And I'll definitely see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.